Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. Listen, this is the Olight Olamp Night Tour in its trash AF. Now, let me explain why I came to that conclusion and why there's probably only one or two scenarios where I can recommend this lamp. But first, if you're the type of person that likes man cave stuff, tools, EDC survival, hit that subscribe button below. Come on, join the battalion. We would love to have you a part of the battalion. So let's imagine that you're now on the hunt for a new desk lamp, man cave lamp, maybe a coffee mess, a bar area, something like that. You begin your search and lo and behold, you land on the Olight Olamp Night Tour. You think to yourself, well, Olight, I've heard of them before. Must be good to go. Could this be your solution for your problem that you're seeking? Possibly. Now, first off, let's talk about this light itself overall. Once again, this is the Olight O Lamp Night Tour. I mean, it's 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 you know, it's a pretty nice looking lamp at first glance. You know, the very top of it, you have a top button here which you can use if I can unstick it. You use this button to engage the lamp head. The lamp head is removable, right? So you can take this thing off. Nice little uh, lamp head, it's magnetic, so nice, pretty strong magnet there. So, you know, this thing goes to a full 90 degrees. So let's turn it off real quick, turn it to the side. So if you have it like this, you can turn it a full 90 degrees. And now you can, you know, beam light forward if that's what you wanna do. This entire lamp is 17 inches in height when you have it in the 90 degree mode. When it's not in the 90 degree mode, it's about 15 inches in height. The base is 3.5 inches in diameter. There is a little indicator light, which lets you know what the charging indicator is on the front of this thing. So it includes a perforated light stem in the middle, which is actually where the light comes from. So in the box, you get the actual light stem body. You get the little lamp head, which is included here. And you get a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. I'm using my personal, own um, personal cable because the one they give you is really short. So the very bottom of the vise is a suction cup. So they kind of made like this suction cup feature so that when it's sitting on a desk or something like that, it's an attempt to keep it from actually falling over, which, you know, it works relatively well, a little bit too well. We'll talk about that here in a second. Now, the actual light stem itself goes up to 60 lumens and let's turn it to white. So it goes up to 60 lumens for brightness. You can bring it all the way down to eight lumens. If you keep it at eight lumens, this thing can go for 31 hours. If you switch it to RGB mode, then this only goes up to 10 lumens. So let's for since it, I want to keep it on blue and I bring it all the way up and it goes up to about 10 lumens. If you keep it on its lowest setting in RGB mode, then you can go about 15 hours. So this actual stem itself can be charged up with the USB charging cable here in the back portion here. And this will go for about, um, it's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so you know how many hours you can get out of that. This lamp head here goes up to 90 lumens and it takes about 30 minutes to charge. It's a 400 milliamp hour lamp head. And, you know, the thing about this, you can charge multiple Olight devices. So if you own other Olight devices like the Baton 3, anything like that, you can actually stick it here and charge it. So here I got a little Baton 3. I can stick that here. And this paddle switch on the actual light itself controls it. So I can turn on the Baton with this paddle switch. It looks a little weird, but if you're in a pinch and you really need to charge your device, then you can use this lamp. This actual lamp head can be used once again with this tail switch, turns it on. This tail switch also dims it, it brightens it. So that's 90 lumens right there. And it brings it down to its minimum of one lumen. So another thing about this lamp head is, let me turn it back up so you can see it, is you can actually remove it and you can still use it. You can shake it. When you shake it, the actual lamp head turns off or you can shake it to reactivate it and it turns back on. It's a pretty unique feature. So let's talk about the perforated edge here. So once again, it has the perforated holes so you can decide which color you want to go with. So here, when you turn it on initially, it's in white. It's normally on its lowest setting. You just simply toggle the paddle switch down here at the bottom. Let me bring you in a little bit so you can see a little bit better, which if you toggle that, 
You can actually brighten whatever color scheme you have going on. You can lower that color temperature here. That same color temperature. So also if you just toggle the toggle switch up once, it would change it from whatever mode you're currently in to the next mode. So we were in RGB mode where it was just changing between those modes. Now it's like in this waterfall RGB mode. So imagine that you're in an RGB mode and you see a color that you like. If you double tap up on that specific color while it's showing, it will actually keep that color. So let's say, for instance, I like that green. I double tap. Now it's going to hold green. I can take green all the way down in lumens. I can bring the green color all the way up in lumens, whatever the case may be. I tap it up. It begins to go in the rainbow effect. Let's say, for instance, while it's in the rainbow effect, you really like the pink being at the top. You double tap. Now the pink will stay here and that flow will stay here. You can turn it all the way up and you can turn it all the way down in the rainbow effect. Tap it up again. It goes back to RGB mode. If you want it to go back to white, you have to turn it off and tap it down to turn it back to white mode. If you simply turn it off and tap it up, it immediately goes back to RGB mode, which can be a little bit confusing. Here is a weird thing about this lamp itself. So this lamp head can only be activated while the device is plugged up. So if I mash this button, nothing happens at all. But as soon as I plug it back up, I tap it, the lamp head begins to work. That's a little bit weird. In my opinion, if you unplug it, the lamp head will stay on because it is removable. Then you, then you can shake it and turn it off. But if you want to activate this lamp head while it's unplugged, you have to shake it to turn it on. Also, you cannot adjust the lumens of the actual lamp head unless it's plugged up. So right now it's about half setting. It's going to stay at half setting unless I plug it back up, turn it down, turn it up, which can be a little bit weird as well. The perforated um, actual ports don't follow the entire um, all the way around the base of the lamp. So imagine I want to use this to spotlight something on a wall. So my intention is to actually turn this lamp head up. You know, I'm spotlighting something on that wall back there, and this is going to be its permanent position. I would kind of like if I could see, you know, the light holes all the way around. That would be kind of nice as well. It's kind of like they're forcing you to use it in this direction in one specific direction, which is kind of weird. I'm not the biggest fan either of the actual logo, the old lamp logo. It looks really cheap. So the world of lamps, you know, I have a couple of other lamps here. Their logos are on the lamps, but it's usually just done in a more subtle way. It just, it just looks really, it looks kind of cheesy. The USB-C type port is recessed here at the bottom. It would be kind of nice if this was covered and you could actually run the cord through it, kind of plug it up, and it kind of just looked like a real, more like a real lamp. The suction cup was a horrible idea. I get the concept, you want this to be able to stay sturdy. This is an aluminum bill, um, but the suction cup is a good idea because yeah, it won't fall, but oftentimes I want to quickly use the device somewhere else within my man cave. I go to pull it, the lamp head goes flying off, or it's extremely hard to pull off. So I understand what suction cups is best to, to slide them towards you. Sometimes, you know, you're using it. You want to be able to grab it quickly. You can't simply pick it up. You kind of got to slide it at an angle or whatever. This lamp head has one flying all over the place several times. I'm not a big fan of that. The lamp head is illuminating downwards onto this desk. And the pattern itself is kind of an odd pattern. And I'm not sure to what purpose I will be able to use this. Let me plug this turn this all the way up. That's as bright as it gets, but if I'm trying to use this for working mode, it's a little weird. And because of the way it's built, it doesn't create a perfect circle. There's actual gap on this side here. And so another thing is that the, the lamp head is a very harsh light. So if we bring it here onto the screen, this is a harsh white light. And when I'm using this for the purposes of like writing or something like that, it's actually kind of harsh to write with the spotlight um, for an extended amount of time. But let's say, for instance, we want to turn that off and we just want to use the actual lamp head itself. This is not that bad when it comes to the world of being able to write. 
but it doesn't really provide the illumination that I would hope that it would. When I turn it all the way up like this, it's actually kind of nice. It does set a nice mood, but it doesn't illuminate my entire desk. So I would use this in three scenarios. So the first one would be here on my man cave desk where I would want to put it in a corner and I would want to try to illuminate either the tiger side of my desk, which is the calm side, the dragon side of my desk, which is where all the you know electronics are. And I would want to use it on the fly with well, a suction cup feature of it makes it so it's really hard to do that. So if I want to turn it quickly and use it over here, the suction cup kind of delays that a little bit. Maybe I want to turn it over here and use it on the tiger side. It's not as fast as I would like for it to be. So normally on my desk, you may have seen my desk tour. I normally keep this Dyson light cycle morph lamp. Now, this is a $649 lamp has $649 features. I would not expect this O lamp to directly replace, you know, my life cycle. However, you know, I would expect for it to have a few features that would be nice. First off, there's only one color temperature with this O light, which I didn't know how important it was to have multiple color temperatures was until I didn't have this anymore. Another thing about this Dyson is that the perforated holes go all the way around so I can see the light from any direction. Um, you know, with the actual Dyson, I can change the color temperature pretty easily. I can also turn that color temperature up pretty bright, however I need it to go as well. There's multiple color temperatures, and with my Dyson, the actual use in any part of my desk is really easy because I can just unclip it here, move it over here, use it on this part of my desk, whatever the case may be, or I can bring it over here using this part of my desk and then when I'm done I simply move it back it has a magnet it catches it it brings it back in place but Dyson does have its downfalls because the Dyson must stay plugged up this I'm gonna tell you about the things I like about it the thing is you can take this thing around and use it for some quick illumination purposes right so if you take this off you shake it you get this turned on, you kind of now have the ability to go in different areas and search for different stuff. That's pretty nice. The aluminum build is something that's actually kind of a pleasure. I'm glad that they went with this nice aluminum body. It feels really sturdy. It feels really rugged. I'm kind of curious about if they could have went a little bit wider on the base to give it more of a lamp feel. But this, I really think they want to keep this in the everyday carry, maybe survival area where you can stick this in a bag and you can use it maybe in a bed of a truck or camping or something like that. 4,000 milliamp hour batteries is nothing to scoff at. If you keep it on its lowest settings, you're gonna be able to use this thing for 31 hours, which is which is not that bad. The fact that you can change to these different colors. So, you know, I usually keep my man cave in this green hue that you can see behind me. So let's say for instance, I get to the green. Now I can keep the green color. If I wanted to, I can keep this in the back of a video bring the color temperature down. This actually wouldn't look too bad. Even if I bring the color temperature up, it still doesn't look that bad to have the green color. So you saw what I normally use on my desk, right? Which is the Dyson light. So for my bar area, I normally use this light by basis. I don't know. And it's really compact light. This thing comes in at $40. It's more traditional looking. You can turn it on, right? So it has the white color. You can also change the color temperatures pretty easily. You can lower the light temperature. You can raise the light temperature. This is what I normally use in my bar area. I can tilt this up, illuminate some bottles, illuminate what I'm doing. I can tilt this down. You know, it provides a, a good amount of light no matter which scenario I'm using it for. So this light's pretty nice, comes in at $40. And when I'm not using it, I can fold it and put it away. Obviously it's battery operated as well. This only has a 2200 milliamp hour battery, so it doesn't last that long. And the standby time is not that long. The battery just seems to constantly be draining in the background, no matter what I, I do. Also from the same company, I use the basis uh, light that used to be on my computer monitor. If you saw my old desk set up from 2021, that thing pumps out plenty of light for my coffee mess and I can see what I'm doing over there. I try to use the O light in that scenario for a day as well. And the, it didn't produce enough light to illuminate what I was doing. 
Right now it's well lit in this garage because I'm filming, but normally when I'm in the garage, I normally only work with the light that's in the background that you cannot see. Those two Edison incandescent bulbs are on the wall and my desk lamp, that's it. And so this thing wasn't producing enough light to keep my eye strain at a good level. So it kind of sounds like I'm taking a dump all over this light, which I kind of am, but I'm not gonna return it and here's why. I don't recommend the light, but I do know how I'm going to deploy the light. I'm probably going to end up keeping this thing just for using it in the bed of the truck. And uh, also I'm going to use it to kind of highlight the giveaway that we're still doing on the channel. This is the Benchmade Boost, the federal government edition. It does come in that olive and khaki colorway. So make sure that you enter. Super, super simple to enter. You know, first off, you got to just use the word battalion within your comment. So comment on this video. However you want to incorporate the word battalion into your comment, comment with the word battalion. Secondly, you need to actually be a subscriber to this channel and I'll be able to tell if you're a subscriber to this channel or not. So I'm going to reach out to you via Instagram. That's also the easiest way to get in touch with me is either Instagram or Discord. Both of those links will be the pinned description down below. And it's that simple. I'm going to pull your name out of a hat next week. And we're going to see who is the winner of this Benchmade Boost. Are you going to pick this thing up? If you're not a part of the battalion, hit that subscribe button below. Tell me more about your desires to see more stuff like this on the channel. Is this something that you would even be interested in? Could you see yourself grabbing something like this? You know, I'll let you comment down below and we'll talk more about that. For those of you that are part of the battalion, thank you for stopping by once again. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.